When the Holy Spirit of God comes into your life, everything about you will change. All those mental strongholds in your mind, they will come down. The fortresses in your mind, they will come down. All those bad habits, they will be destroyed. All those sinful tendencies of the flesh, you know, the Bible talks about the fleshy nature. They will be destroyed and thrown out. When the Holy Spirit comes in, sometimes it happens instantly. Sometimes it happens in layers, slowly. And I believe that has to do, do, with, do with how fast you, how much you surrender to the Holy Spirit. Now to receive the Holy Spirit goes without saying that you have accepted Jesus Christ. We don't receive the Holy Spirit. Nobody does. You don't receive the Holy Spirit until Jesus comes in. Jesus is the one that went to the cross and took on the sins of mankind and the sicknesses of mankind and the evil appetites and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life and the lust of the eyes and everything that is just not of God and that addiction and that depression and that anxiety and that fear and those suicidal thoughts and Jesus took all of that and that lying and that fornication and that adultery, idolatry, Jesus took all of that on his body and he put that body, he nailed that body to the cross. He's saying to you, I'm nailing your sins to the cross. Your evil desires, the appetites of the flesh, I'm nailing, I'm nailing that all to the cross. And then Jesus put his body to death. You say, how did Jesus put his body to death? You know, the, the, the Romans did. No, Jesus said, I lay my life down and I pick it up again. Jesus could have any time uh, commanded angels to come and take him down. Or Jesus could have just spoken, nails be removed and the nails will be removed. But he didn't. Because Jesus knew him going to the cross, the crucifixion was not a defeat, but was a victory. The whole point was Jesus to be crucified with all, taking on the sins of the world and being crucified so he can put all those sins to death. How else was he going to put the sins to death? He was a sacrificial lamb. He was the last sacrificial lamb. And he put that all to death. You know, and then he rose on the third day. So he's saying to you, look, I'm nailing your sins to the cross. I'm putting your sins to death. And then he rose on the third day. And he's saying to you, those sins have no power over me. Death has no power over me. Look, I've put that to death. The sins to death. I've even defeated death because I raised from the dead. He says that stuff has no power over me. And if you just receive me into your heart as your Lord, as your Savior, then none of that stuff will have power over you. Jesus is saying that depression will have no power over you. If you just receive me into your heart as your Lord, I will take lordship over everything but if you refuse to receive me into your heart as your lord then that depression will have lordship over you that anxiety will have lordship over you those evil sins will have lordship over you that depression those suicidal thoughts and everything that is just not of god will have power over you not authority power the devil has no authority over anybody he is there illegally he's trespassing he has no authority over you but he has power because you give him that power because the bible says jesus says all authority was given to me in other words was given to jesus if all authority was given to jesus then it means satan has no authority right and then jesus said <clears throat> to his believers i give you power and authority i give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the devil and nothing shall by no means harm you so you have the authority over the devil and the devil has no authority and jesus has given you all power over the devil which means the devil has no power over you but guess what when you give him that power 
by opening doors and allowing him in, then he has power over you, but he has no authority to be there. He's trespassing. He has no legal rights. Sometimes you hear deliverance ministers and they say, they're casting out the demons and the demons are not leaving. And then the deliverance minister says, what legal right do you have to be here? And that's just so wrong. The devil has no legal right to be there. He is trespassing. So from the one side, you're putting it in the person's mind that Jesus is going to deliver you now from this demon. But in the other, on the other side, you're putting it in the person's mind. When you say to the demon, what legal right do you have to be here? You're putting it in the person's mind that Satan has a legal right to be there. He does not have a legal right to be there. Absolutely none, 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 none. He's trespassing. He's there illegally. Okay? Know that. So we, when Jesus Christ went to the cross, he, he took on all the sin, all the evil bondages, all the evil imaginations, all the appetites of the heart. Listen, all powers of darkness Jesus dismantled on the cross cross he took all of that on he brought his body and he put that stuff to death and then he rose from the dead so it's like me coming I'm taking all this garbage 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 and then I go and dump it somewhere I'm getting rid of it and then I come back or put another way I'm taking on Jesus is taking on all this evil all this sin all this negativity Everything that is just not of God is taken on his body. He puts that body to body to death. So he's putting all that stuff to death. And then he rises on the third day because he has power over those things. But those things don't rise on the third day because they have no power. Jesus has taken away the power of the devil. He's taken away the power of the devil. The devil has no more power in your life. He has no authority in your life. The only power he has is what you give to him. He's there illegally. So how does he? How do you give him that power? When you start agreeing with his lies. That arthritis will never go away. You've just entered an agreement with the devil's lies. Why? Because the Bible says by his stripes you have been healed. When the devil says, you know, with all that corona going on, fear your finances, fear your family, fear the your health, fear this, fear that. And then you start to take all of those lies in. And then you start to think it, dwell over it. Creating worst case scenarios in your mind. Guess what? You've just entered an agreement with the devil with all that fear. Because the Bible says, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. The devil comes in and he says to you, it's not possible. You can't achieve that. Don't bother trying. It will never work. It's a lie. And when you believe that and you start to think, can I really do that? Can it really work? Oh, I'm not sure that's possible. And the more you think it, the more you enter deeper into the lie of the devil. So the more he has his grips over you, you're giving him that power. Because the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's literally... A spiritual warfare in the mind. The battlefield is the mind. It's literally a war to believe the truth of God over the lies of the devil. The battlefield is the mind. The only thing the devil can do is to throw lies at you and just hold hope you grab onto it and when you grab if you grab onto it and you start dwelling on it and dwelling on it and dwelling on it then what is in the mind will start to sink down into your heart and then out of your heart flow the issues of life you start to speak like that uh, this arthritis can never go away. I can never achieve that. It's not possible. This this disease is incurable. Yeah, and the doctor's just giving me a bad report and this disease is incurable. You know, oh, this back pain of mine is just killing me. The Bible says both life and death come from the tongue. 
So the only thing the devil can do is just throw lies at you. Throw lies at you and throw lies at you. That's all he does. That's all he can do. And just hope that you grab onto one of those lies and start feeding from it. Start feeding from it. Start feed. It's not a physical food like a steak or a fish where you eat it and you and you strengthen, you build up your body. It's a spiritual food. It's a spiritual food because you can't see it physically. It's a spiritual thing. You feed off these lies. You feed off these lies. You start feeding this spiritual food into your inner spirit, man. And then you start, it starts, and, and this, it is, it is of the knowledge you, you are eating from the forbidden tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God told you, you can eat of all these fruitful trees in the garden, but do not eat from that tree, for you shall surely die. And yet the same lie he told Eve in the garden of Eden is using that same lie today. You will, did God really tell you not to eat from that tree? No, you will not surely die. For when you eat, you will surely become like God. Or when you eat from this, you will surely fill in the gap. Fill in the gap with the lie he tells you. If you just think these still fearful thoughts, you will be doing yourself good because then you have time to protect yourself. You were doing yourself good because then you can come up with an alternative as to how to strengthen yourself, as to how to fix your life, as to how to fill in the gap with the lie he tells you. We are not to eat from the forbidden fruit. We are not to feed our spirit man with the forbidden lies of the devil. We are to feed our spirit man with the spiritual food of God. So when the devil comes in with a lie, you can't. It's not possible. Don't bother trying. It will never work. You say you are a liar. For I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When he says that arthritis will never go away. And maybe, yeah, the doctor has given you a, re a doctor's report. There is arthritis in your body. It's there. It's written. It's like plain sight. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. The Bible says walk by faith and not by sight. In other words, we don't go by facts. It's a fact that there is arthritis in the body. It's written. Here's a doctor's report. But we don't go by facts. We go by faith. Because the fact tells me there is arthritis, but the faith tells me by his stripes, I have been healed. Not I will be healed, I have been healed. Why? Because when Jesus Christ went to the cross 2,000 years ago, he dismantled all powers of darkness. He put to death every single sickness and every single disease, including that arthritis. So if you're sitting here and saying, my arthritis is incurable, my, you're making it your own, my arthritis, my back pain. My back pain is killing me. You're eating from the forbidden tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's evil knowledge. My arthritis. My back is killing me. Why is it evil knowledge? Because the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. And when you start to feed off the lies of the devil and you are eating 
of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You start to eat that food. You're feeding your spirit man with that defiled food, weakening your inner spirit man. And that stuff enters into your heart and then out of your heart flow the issues of life. So you start to speak that defilement into your surroundings, into your environment, over your finances, over yourself, over your life, over your family. And the Bible says both life and death come from the tongue. When we start to manifest evil through the power of the tongue, it's called curses. God spoke and said, let there be light. And there was light. So God speaks things into existence. But then the Bible says, let us make man in our image, giving them dominion. So we are made in the image of God, which means we can speak things into existence. And this is why when the man of God speaks, you demon, you come out of this man. Or when the man of God speaks, touches and says, be healed now in the name of Jesus Christ. It is done because God has given us the power to speak things into existence. And when you speak evil and when you speak sickness and when you speak sin and when you speak defilement over your body, even if the facts say so, you speak defilement over your body. You are speaking the works of the devil into your life. And when you manifest evil with your tongue, it's called casting spells, curses. You are putting curses upon your life. You are putting spells on your life. For both life and death, come from the tongue and he who speaks it shall eat its fruit hallelujah what is the solution you will never know the lies that the devil throws at you unless you know the truth how else can you measure a lie and say, this is a lie. If you do not measure it against something. To discern. If the truth is not there. And all you see and all you know is the lie. Then that's what you will believe. But when you bring the truth of Christ in. You can now discern. You can now measure. Hang on. If this is the truth. Then this must be a lie. And the only way you will know the truth of Jesus Christ is if you read the truth of Jesus Christ. There is no other way to know. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. With that being said, my books can be purchased below. Worldly Life of Deception, a lot of what we have spoken about today. Who is God? From New Age Occult to Jesus Christ. I'm currently writing Spiritual Warfare. Powerful book. All can be purchased from any Amazon worldwide. The link is below. If you need prayers, deliverance, healing, message me on social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, so on. God bless you.